down the Bulldogs of the Citadel. Of course, with apologies to Tom Brady, the new name to know in these parts, at least on Saturdays, is the new head coach for USF, Jeff Scott. Lincoln Rose, Stanford route with you in Stanford. He's trying to make things look a little bit more like Clemson, South Carolina these days. Oh, yes, definitely. Just uh, we talked with him this week, and he obviously said he wants to be up-tempo. They're going to go ahead and try to throw the ball up in the air early and often using some of that young speed that he has on the edges. It's going to be very interesting and very exciting to watch this game. South Florida will have a robust schedule this fall. Meanwhile, the Citadel, this is one of just four games on their 2020 slate, and even they are fortunate, one of just 15 Division I FCS programs suiting up to play any competition this fall. You see teams ranging from one, just one game all the way up to nine games. They are one of four Southern Conference teams to be able to suit up as tonight. They try to upset FBS member South Florida. This is after, of course, the Citadel last year knocked off Georgia Tech in overtime. Yes, Coach Brent Thompson is very adamant about this game. He wants to start fast and he wants to be physical. I love seeing the college football is now back. We got the Citadel, we got South Florida. Man, who knows, Lincoln, we might get an, up, an upset tonight. Take a look at the all-time history, some unique matchups. The first team to ever beat the USF football program is back in 1997 when they themselves were a member of Division I, back then AA, now FCS. That loss in Charleston Bulls bounce back the next year. Their first ever home win here at Raymond James Stadium was against the Citadel. They have not met since that victory back in 1998. A few unique ties, though, to the, between these two programs that we'll get into a little bit later on. So the triple option offense, no surprise seeing it at the service academies, and that includes here with the Bulldogs of the Citadel. And we will see that offense out first, presumably, as they will get the football first to begin their 2020 campaign. I must say, Lincoln, I did not think that we would be here a couple months ago. College football is back, and I am so excited to be a part of it. The American opting to suit up and play football this fall. We mentioned most FCS conferences are holding out hope to play some sort of season in the spring. That could include the Citadel. And out to the 25-yard line is where things will begin for the Bulldogs. And, of course, they bring out their preseason All-American quarterback, Brandon Rainey, last year accounting for 30 total touchdowns. The senior out of Georgia put up the best numbers for a quarterback in the Citadel's football program history. So they know what they have under center. It's a question of some new names in the backfield. Slot had a lot of confidence, though, and a veteran offensive line in front of him. And this will be a unique look for South Florida. They are mindful. You can't win the American without beating Navy, and this is a good warm-up against the triple option. As we are underway, the opening toss goes to Cooper Wallace, a redshirt freshman with his first collegiate carry. And a nice game to start off. You want to go ahead and try to get the chains moving early. You want to get some successful plays if you're the Citadel, so you can go ahead and now try to get this South Florida defense back on their heels. Wallace moves from an option quarterback to that running back position, technically an A back in this formation. You played on the defensive side of the ball. How much did playing these offenses, running the triple option, give you fits? Oh, this is assignment sound football. If anybody is out of their gap, please believe they will definitely be able to find the crease and it will be big plays in a long night for South Florida. Back to back times that they opt to hand it off to Wallace. You take a look at the cadets who get the start tonight and the first of four games, three of them will be on national television, including this evening. A nice spotlight for head coach Brent Thompson's crew. And it's an offensive line with a lot of starts returning this year. And an early first down, first carry for Keith White, the sophomore. Really the speedster out of that backfield. They just want to build some confidence and this will help moving the sticks. Starting off with the motion and then putting his foot down, getting downfield. Now you got first down and 10. Oh, it was a third and three. Great run by Keith White. Antonio Greer, the middle linebacker among those in on the stop for the Bulls. No fans allowed in attendance tonight here at Raymond James Stadium. Bulls will announce their plans moving forward for the remaining home games at this stadium, which they share with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Part of that is likely waiting to hear what the NFL franchise has determined is appropriate for the venue. But encouraging so far, 
for the Citadel. Meanwhile, for USF, new defensive coordinator Glenn Spencer. Take a look at his starters here tonight. Looking to get the Bulldogs off the field. Rainey. And that time they were able to snuff it out after the Bulldogs had moved it across midfield. The stout front seven of the South Florida Bulls was able to go ahead and come up big. Now they're forcing a third and short. Citadel is going to have to go ahead and find a way to get this conversion so they can keep the chains moving. Last year's win at Georgia Tech, the eighth victory over an FBS program for the Citadel. Includes some wins against in-state foe South Carolina. Brandon Rainey getting some of those tough yards, now moving the chains. You can see Citadel is starting to gain some confidence and some momentum. Big play coming up. As hanging on, as Antonio Greer setting up a third and one for this veteran line. Right up the middle, ball is loose, and the Bulls force their first turnover of 2020. Johnny on the spot for USF, Mike Hampton. Glenn Spencer coming over from Florida Atlantic, loves turnovers, and what do you know, right out the gate, Mike Hampton hopping on the ball, they're forcing the fumble, and now USF, I'm sorry, South Florida, now has the ball with the momentum, and they can go ahead and now start moving their offense with Jordan McLeod. Looked like it was Blake Green, the nose tackle, that helped strip that ball loose. A former walk-on, years later, well-earned scholarship. Man in the middle, gets the ball back. And it introduces us to Jordan McLeod, who gets the start. Three quarterbacks battled for this job this year. We'll likely see all three throughout the season. Uh, Bulls will start out on the ground in an eight-yard carry, courtesy of Kelly Joyner. South Florida starting off fast. Nine-yard game by Kelly Joyner, and they can see they're starting to get that up-tempo offense like what Clemson always has. McLeod is the second McLeod brother to play for Jeff Scott. His older brother, of course, Ray Ray in the NFL these days, was a receiver for then the offensive coordinator at Clemson. And a quick out to St. Felix to go ahead and get the chains moving. Now South Florida is in business with the momentum. Ten starts last year for Cloud as a freshman. The sophomores from right here in the Bay Area. On third and one. And this will be close as they go back to Joyner. Might be a little short. And they're motioning for a first down. They did get enough to move the sticks. You see the men who surround McLeod. Joyner a couple of carries already. And you're going to see some big physical receivers try to live up to the success that Jeff Scott saw in his last jump. But early on the ground, a big hit. However, courtesy of Anthony Britton. Jordan McLeod on the keeper trying to make sure that they can work the edges against this Citadel defense to go ahead and try to augment and use their athleticism and their superior talent. Citadel's got to go ahead and get off this field. He introduces himself to the quarterback. On second and eight, a little seven-yard toss out to Trey Dukes. Well, Dukes, we talk about the big receivers, the six-foot-four graduate student, probably has NFL size and they think he's going to enjoy a fresh start here under a new coaching staff with some new opportunities. On third and one, the defense from the Citadel able to get through and break up that play. And a decision to be made here coming up. And this may turn out to be a break for South Florida after losing yardage. Technically, the play never happening. False start. They'll get to replay the down. And now, Tony Gratham can go ahead and try to mix things up and maybe take a few chances to try to go ahead and get this stop against South Florida. So third and six for Jordan McLeod. Pocket holds up, McLeod will tuck it down, has the first down inside the 40-yard line. And again, the false start turns out to be a lucky break for the Bulls. Defensive coordinator for Citadel, Tony Gratham, tried to send Destin Mack the left corner on a cornerback blitz, but Jordan McLeod doing a great job of eluding the pass rush, getting out on the edges, and getting the first down to keep the chains moving for the South Florida Bulls. 
again as a returning starter this job was not necessarily his you had a couple of transfers coming in this year Kate Fortin from North Carolina and former SWAC offensive player of the year Noah Johnson they want it all looking for their first points of 2020 as eyeing downfield O'Marion Dollison just unable to connect at that time with the man who was originally committed to Cincinnati but Jeff Scott was able to convince him to switch to USF Yes, South Florida, obviously uh, most offenses, whenever they cross the 50, they get into the high red area. They like to take a shot. At that time they had him open, just couldn't connect. They'll keep it on the ground on second and 10. And another big play from this defense from the Citadel. That time, Willie Eubanks, who may be playing on Sundays in the next couple of years as well. The preseason All-American middle linebacker. Willie Eubanks with a phenomenal play, breaking through the offensive line right here and making this tackle for a loss on Johnny Ford. Now brings up a third and long, giving Coach Ted, Tony Gratham a chance to now go ahead and mix up some coverages, maybe a blitz, maybe a fire zone. Eubanks was Defensive Player of the Year in the Southern Conference last year. McLeod under pressure, a little security blanket in Ford. Ford able to elude the initial tackler and is inside the 35. Great play by Johnny Ford, turning nothing into something, putting his foot in the ground and actually getting up there. Now, guess what? We have a fourth and short. You might see South Florida go ahead and go for this and not just kick the field goal, Lincoln. Ford was one of the Bulls' top receivers a couple years ago, just able to suit up for four games last season. And on fourth and five, let's see if they snap the ball. They do. Pocket collapsing. McLeod under pressure. That's a forward pass. It'll be ruled incomplete, but also a turnover on down. So after the Citadel commits the turnover at midfield, no damage done. We are scoreless and just happy to be playing college football in Tampa. Bulls and Bulldogs at Ray J. Scoreless after each team had the football once, the Citadel with a fumble at midfield, not allowing any points the other way. Turnover on downs moment ago from South Florida. Lincoln Rose, Stanford route with you this evening for the season opener for both of these teams. And Stanford, you might argue that a team like the Citadel that's going to run the ball almost exclusively, these might be ideal conditions with this one. Oh, no question. Whenever you have a rainy, inclement weather, things like that, it actually bodes well for the team that likes to put the ball on the ground even more than this aerial attack that you see out of South Florida with obviously a Jeff Scott and all of his receiving corps. They just want to avoid literally putting the ball on the ground like they did on the last drive. And they went seven plays, 36 yards. The ball will come loose, but out of bounds. A nice gain. Getting a little chippy over there. We can work on the social distancing on the sideline. <laughs> uh, obviously, uh, Brendan Rainey with the option to a Keith White get picking up a good game. Now you've got a second and short, and this is how you have to be successful with the triple option run game. You have to start fast on first down. Now they're going to say got the 10 yards needed up to the 45 yard line. Rainey will pitch it to Hampton. Looking for the edge, not able to get there, not able to outrun the speed for the Bulls. The tackle courtesy of Makai LaPointe. And this is what you call NFL ability, getting to the edge. Makai LaPointe getting that tackle on Derek Hampton for no gain. That is what South Florida is going to have to make sure that they can do to stop this triple option by the Citadel. Citadel likes to model themselves after a lot of the other service academies, but as we'll see here, Rainey is certainly capable of airing this ball out. Able to do so, a flag will fly, will get the call, but at the moment, pass complete to White out of the backfield. Very interested to see what this call is going to be. Tim Rich, our referee. They'll decline the defensive holding and accept the play. 
whenever you're going against a triple option, the best thing that you can do as a defender is you have to play with good eyes. It is crucial. And already you can see South Florida letting their eyes somewhat lie to them and not paying attention to their keys. Brandon Rainey able to go with the play action fake and then throw it over the top to uh, Keith White for the big play. You now in the high red. Citadel is off and moving. It looks like they actually have a chance right here to put it put the ball in the end zone. Well, South Florida knows Rainey is a threat with his arm. He'll keep it this time. And a nice six yard gain before it's all said and done. Talking to the Bulls, they thought perhaps the Citadel looked a little bit more like Georgia Tech's option with the ability to air things out downfield. But there you see the ratio. Yes, and conversely, Coach Thompson believes that they're more like the Army or the Navy type of triple option. But Brandon Rainey, great run right there. That's what uh, Citadel is going to have to do, getting the tough yards, just like what Coach Thompson said, the type of quarterback he is. Rainey last year threw for 1,100, ran for another 900. That one just through the fingertips of Logan Brock, who they moved over from the defensive side this offseason. Randy going on the naked move, trying to find Logan Brock in the flag. Just overthrew him just a little bit, but that's what happens. Obviously, it's the first game of the season. We see the pandemic has really put a, a stranglehold on the guys in preparation and having the team practices. And then also with the inclement weather, we see the Citadel does not like to always throw the ball. Just having just a mishap. Now brings up third and four. Third and four, as you know. Bulls trying to force perhaps a field goal try. Randy. Close to that first down marker, but numbers will add up for the Bulls. It'll be close. And we will see where they ultimately spot this football. Brandon Rainey, once again, willing to get those tough yards. Brings up now they got the first down, and Citadel is really going in and now putting it to this South Florida defense. So not having to entrust one of their kickers who are fighting for the jobs, a couple of freshmen, at least not yet. They are looking to strike first here on the road against USF. This game was not originally on the schedule. The Citadel had their entire 2020 schedule erased, not just SOCON play. They were able to track down three road games and one home game. Kelvin Pinckney making a great stop up the middle for the, for the South Florida defense, now second and eight. From the 19. Hampton, again trying to turn that corner, will lose a yard. A time tracked down from behind from Dwayne Boyles. Off returning tackler for this USF defense. Again, a new boss this year with defensive coordinator Glenn Spencer taking over. Both coordinators for the Bulls come from Florida Atlantic from Lane Kiffin's old staff. And they have to be thrilled already with one turnover. When Jeff Scott was trying to find coordinators, he wanted to find some who had had a successful turnover ratio. That's something that the Clemson staff keeps an eye on nationally. And Florida Atlantic all season long was one of the best in the country. So he said, why not take both Charlie Weiss Jr. as well as Glenn Spencer. Ball on the turf and just fortunate to fall on it. Back around the 23-yard line. Whenever you have rain outside, uh, that's when the ball becomes very slippery. South Florida doing a good job of pursuing from from east to west, from left to right. Now putting a little bit of pressure on these running backs for the Citadel to actually try to want to go ahead and get up the field a little bit quicker than usual. And that's caused them to probably mishandle the ball. It's going to set up about a 30-yard field goal try. Or pardon me, a 40-yard field goal try here. And they may have to move back. It is Colby Kittner who for now has won the job. He was able to hit from 52 in practice, a little bit more confident in this Ball range. Start. Offense, number 52, five yard penalty. It's fourth down. But that is not going to help. Coach Thompson said that he's got the strongest leg, said he's hit about a couple 50 yarders, but we just got to go ahead and see now can he transfer that from the practice field to the game. Looking for the first points on the year and an early lead against USF from 52. Nailed it. Colby Kittner has the Bulldogs out on top in the driver's seat to kick off this 2020 campaign. Again, looking to knock off another FBS foe.
Citadel out ahead of USF. That was the second drive of the night. Able to take a little over four minutes off with those 10 plays, and that's the kind of football they need if they're going to be victorious tonight. Yes, yeah, Citadel is going to have to make sure that they stay in front of the Bulls because obviously we can see that they have more depth. They have more talent on the edges where the playmakers are. So they are going to have to make sure that they win this game the right way. And right now with this incoming weather, it is already swinging the pendulum in Citadel's favor. Going to be interesting to see what is Jeff Scott going to come out here on offense with, what offensive coordinator Charlie Weiss. Are they going to take some shots or are they going to try to pound the run game? USF would like to flex their depth. If they can start picking up first downs, play up tempo, they'll have nice starting field position. Second drive of the season coming up for South Florida. This after the return from the new tight end, Mitchell Brinkman, transfer out of Northern Illinois. Might see some Latrell Williams in this series for the South Florida Bulls. Maybe try to get him on a post pattern, singled up with a slot receiver, or maybe a safety, something like that to go ahead and kind of get some momentum going for this Bulls offense. And yeah, they love his speed. I think he might be a wild card by the end of the year, coming out of the former Last Chance U, Independence Community College up in Kansas. A little toss, and enough to pick up a few yards there from Johnny Ford, his second touch, the sophomore out of Miami. Trying to get Johnny Ford going to the left on that jet sweep. Trying to get some positive yards. Now brings up a second and short for South Florida. And this is what they're going to have to do to go ahead and string together a successful drive that ends in points. Even with Marquise Blunt for the Citadel getting into the backfield to alter the angle. It'll pick up positive yardage. Setting up a long five here on second down. Little play action down the middle. And it's a first down catch, sure-handed by Bryce Miller. Just down the road out of St. Petersburg. And this is the RPO, but it's going ahead and taking college football by storm, where the quarterback has a chance to either hand the ball off or he can throw it, getting the defense to overcommit, finding Bryce Miller over the middle for a nice game. Trainers come out. They really think Bryce Miller could enjoy a career in this offense like Adam Humphreys did in the slot. Current. Tennessee Titan, former Clemson Tiger. Oh yeah, that is straight out of the Clemson playbook. The RPO, guys like Taj Boyd, you see Trevor Lawrence, we see Deshaun Watson. That is the staple out of their uh, playbook. Well, while they tend to Chris Beverly, preseason all SOCON standout, we step aside. At midfield, as we welcome you back here in Tampa, USF second drive of the night. Moments ago, we went to break with Chris Beverly being helped off the field, the free safety. Looking to lay a lick, separating the ball carrier from the football. But Chris may have got the worst of that exchange. Still trying to walk it off on the Citadel sideline. This will set up third and one. Maybe a long one. Or South Florida. <clears throat> South Florida trying to get to the edges once again. Willie Eubanks coming up making a big hit. Now we got a third one. We got another big play coming. See if Citadel can go ahead and try to find a way to get off this field and force a punt from South Florida. Already one turnover on downs for this Bulls offense. Jordan McLeod's taking every snap tonight so far. Dumps this one down to one of his new best friends, Brinkman. Not going down easily. And once again, South Florida giving a little bit of that play fake just to go ahead and get Brinkman out of the flats, and then he just does the rest. Big man rumbling, stumbling, forcing missed tackles, getting the South Florida Bulls now deep into the red zone with a chance to go ahead and come away with points. Parrish Gordon unable to bring him down on first contact. Spinning out of the tackle there, Johnny Ford. A little more north-south running this time. A gain of four. Now South Florida is up and moving. They're finally getting the game to now be the way that they wanted it to, using their talent, using their superior depth to try to go ahead and wear down this Citadel defense. Bulls have already matched the two first downs they had on the opening drive before giving it back to the Bulldogs. Looking for points here, currently trailing by the field goal. Getting a little contact before heading out of bounds. Johnny Ford as he welcomes Jay Howard to the ball game. 
Defensive back for the Bulldogs, able to put an end to the run, though. Once again, South Florida going to the edges, getting Johnny Ford off on a jet sweep, and then at the end, lowers the boom on Jay Howard, showing that, hey, guys, I may only be 5'5", five five, I may only be 180, but you know what? I can pack a punch, too. So again, Jordan McLeod, last year as a freshman, those 10 starts, combining for 16 touchdowns, is bigger this year, stronger this year, and more motivated with a couple of transfer quarterbacks from North Carolina and from the SWAC's Alcorn State, helping push them. South Florida now is really getting their footing, trying to see if they can go ahead and keep working on the edges. I look for McLeod maybe on a quarterback bootleg, something like that, try to go ahead and get him going in the run game. Down by three, first and goal. Looking for the corner, has it, and for the first time in 2020, South Florida is on the board. Touchdown brought in by Trey Dukes. Jordan McLeod throwing the back shoulder fade to DeFontress Odom's Duke. Destin Mack was in pretty good coverage, but it is so difficult to beat a good thrown ball. And this is something that all you young DBs out there need to be, un need to be aware, that when the ball is in the air, you gotta find a way to get it out. Great throw by Jordan McLeod. Great catch by Odom's Duke. Now South Florida is up 6-3 with a chance to go up 7-3 uh, with, uh, with this extra point. Perhaps no returning receiver was set to benefit more from this offense and this scheme than the 6'4 Trey Dukes. Spencer Schrader on for the extra point. Flags fly. And at the moment, 7-3. First score of the year comes on their second drive. Illegal participation. Jordan McLeod dials up Trey Dukes. And let's go back to the touchdown pass. Great throw, putting it up there where his big man can go up for the ball. Obviously, you see Destin Mack did not look back quite as early as he should have. The back shoulder fade is the toughest route to cover in all of football. Trust me, I would play corner for many years in the NFL, and that is something that I always struggle with. So great job by South Florida, finding their footing, now being up 7-3. We got to see how Citadel bounces back and faces adversity in this moment. And it's all part of this Charlie Weiss Jr. offense, the 27-year-old offensive coordinator for South Florida. And of course, you know his namesake, former head coach at Notre Dame in Kansas. And not only that, this, that's the youngest coaching staff in the entire American Athletic Conference, Lincoln. Yeah, head coach Jeff Scott still just south of 40 years old. Extra point a moment ago from Strader, who gets us back under one. Inside the final minute of this opening quarter, both teams putting up their first points of the season on their second drives of the night. And I'm also interested to see exactly how this South Florida defense is going to respond. It seemed like they kind of stubbed their toe a little bit early on, still making turnovers, but were missing tackles in the run game with the running backs like uh, Mike White and other guys like that, Brandon Rainey. I want to see if South Florida going to go ahead and try to put their stamp down and go ahead and stop this Citadel offense and have their eyes in the right place against this triple option threat. So for the first time tonight, Brandon Rainey comes out with his Bulldogs trailing. And just straight ahead, back to Logan Brock, his second carry of the night for the freshman. Gain of four. Inside half a minute to go. Preseason All-American able to muscle maybe for a yard. That will be the final snap of the opening frame. And shutting things down for this Bulls defense, Andrew Mims. Will they or won't they? We finally learned this last month. They will. We're playing college football. Teams from the American and Southern Conference colliding tonight. Bulls up 7-3 after the first quarter.
of the Bulldogs certainly helps that on his resume was the fact that he majored in peace, war, and diplomacy. As Citadel with their third drive of the night, looking to get the touchdown right back. How about the first play from scrimmage to start this second quarter? Long run from the preseason all-conference standout in the SOCON, Raleigh Webb. A little bit of trickeration going on the reverse to Raleigh Webb getting on the edges, outrunning that South Florida defense. And now we see Citadel has responded to adversity. Now they have the ball deep into South Florida territory, and let's see what they can de now do with this. So after the 41-yard carry for Webb, into bull territory, and a nice surge straight ahead, unintimidated, another carry for the freshman Brock. Logan Brock now lowering the boom, getting those tough yards that Citadel needs so much right now. Brings up, looks like about a second and five. So Citadel doing a good job of responding to adversity, responding to the touchdown that South Florida just put on the board. Bulldogs settled for a 45-yard field goal, their last trip down. And able to shed the blocker. Standing him up was K.J. Sales until he got some help. A stop for loss from this defense. All you corners out there, all you DBs, look at KJ Sales come up, take on this block, and then go ahead and match the big running back, Cooper Wallace, right there, being able to uh, help out on the tackle. Great job by KJ Sales and the rest of this South Florida defense. Now third and long. Let's see what uh, Glenn Spence is going to dial up. At least Sanders able to polish him off. Rainey through the air, down the middle. Able to hit his target, a bullseye to Ryan McCarthy. And Citadel is keeping true to what they do. Lucante just having a nice throw over the middle, calling that play, still moving the chains to Ryan McCarthy over the middle. And now you can see that, obviously, Lincoln, this South Con, uh, this, this Southern Conference is no joke because Citadel is coming to play. They're not backing down from South Florida by any stretch of the imagination. 10-yard pass and catch, another first down here for the Bulldogs. They continue to march now into the red zone. As the dive from Brecht. As they about the 17-yard line. You're getting some really good penetration by all the guys up front. Prince Howard, Whitaker, Jonathan Toole, Hayden Haas. They're doing a good job of getting, of getting penetration against Darian Grant, Blake Green, all those guys up front. The South Florida Bulls are going to have to find a way to try to try to go ahead and reverse that penetration. That way they go ahead and slow down this rushing attack by Citadel. Last year averaged a little under 300 yards rushing, one of the top Div Division I rushing offenses, whether it be FBS or FCS in the country. And now Citadel is getting pushed back. Looks like it was a hold call. Of course, the Bulls had to practice against this. Try to find somebody who could mimic the talents of Brandon Rainey. And this is where things get interesting because now we have a second and long for this Bulldog offense. So now because it's second and long, you're not going to be able to just run the ball usually like you can with the chains being so short. It was Bulls safety Bailey Purcell who played the role of quarterback on the scout team. As Brecht is a load to bring down, but the Bulls are up to the challenge. And Logan now is going to bring up a third and long situation. Going to be interesting to see what Luke Conte go ahead and tries to dial up because I doubt you're going to be able to just run the ball, obviously, now for the first down. South Florida is going to be in a little bit of an exotic defense by Glenn Spencer. So we're going to be really, really interested in seeing what's going to happen now. Remember with that penalty on first down, uh, this will now set up third and 17. Third and 15, and nothing doing. Limited plays in the Bulldogs playbook there. They just wanted to stay within field goal range, they hope. Let's see if that's what they have in mind. Well, they connected from 45 on their last drive. Brandon Rainey accounting for 30 touchdowns last year, unable to punch one in just yet here in Tampa. You see his frustration. They entrust once again the freshman Kittner. And Kittner is perfect on his young career. Two for two. That one just sneaks inside. Bulldogs.
back within one. College football underway here in week two. Out of FCS Conference SOCON. Bulldogs about to kick this ball back to South Florida. Home opener for the Bulls, season opener for both teams. Throw Stanford route with you. Great to have you with us this evening. And a 41-yard field goal a moment ago from Colby Kintner. I have to imagine a kicker or a punter who's also a cadet at a military academy. A little bit different personality than front the stereotype that we have for the average special teams member. Oh, yes, definitely. Uh, talking to Coach Brett Thompson throughout the week, obviously he said that these guys, they do more before 6 a.m. than most people do all day. So definitely does not fit the mold of your quintessential punter. Matt Campbell handles the kickoffs. Again, the fair catch from the tight end, Mitchell Brinkman. Last time we saw the Bulls take the field, they punched in their first touchdown of the young campaign. It was Jordan McLeod finding perhaps what will be one of his favorite receivers in this new offense under offensive coordinator Charlie Weiss Jr., Trey Dukes. That big six foot four for him. And that's exactly what you need in the red zone. Somebody like that, 6'4", big guy that you want to go up for the ball. you got to put it up there where you give him a chance every time. That is a touchdown on Saturdays. That is a touchdown on Sundays. Dukes getting both feet in. Bulls go to the ground. And nothing doing. A big stop from Sean Thomas Faulkner. The fourth year man, Redshirt Jr. for the Citadel. Faulkner staying home, reading his keys, doing a great job meeting Darian Felix out there on the edges. Does a great job of corralling him, almost kind of goat ropes him a little bit. Now brings up second and 12 for South Florida. Great job, great tackle by Sean Thomas Faulkner. From their own 24. McLeod eyes his receiver downfield. This time has Bryce Miller to get things moving. And can they finally get the up-tempo element started here that they were talking a lot about this offseason? And you can see Sean Thomas Faulkner uh, talking to some players on his defense, wondering why did it appear that Bryce Miller is so wide open in the flats. They're all ready to snap the football here on first and 10, catch the defense standing. And a lot of yardage to be gained by Darian Felix. Chris Beverly back in the game, coming up, making a tackle on Darian Felix. But you can see South Florida is starting to get their footing going on the offensive side of the ball. Has to make you wonder, is the Citadel slowly starting to wear down a little bit on defense in this early second quarter in this South Florida humidity? Eight yards for the former Oregon Duck, wearing a different shade of green these days. And another first down across midfield as the ball right back to Felix. If you're defense coordinator Tony Grantham, you're going to have to find a way to start confusing this South Florida offense a little bit. Maybe start putting a little bit more pressure up the middle to try to go ahead and stop some of this penetration that it appears that the South Florida Bulls are starting to get with Darian Felix and Kelly Joyner and Jordan McLeod and everybody. Another first and 10, this time from the 50. McLeod, pocket hold strong, looking for that receiver and wisely just throws it away. Well, the Bulls are in good company here in this nail biter with the Citadel. It was just a few years ago that the Bulldogs took the Crimson Tide of Alabama to halftime even at 10 apiece. They had actually been the only team in a couple of weeks that had put up points that year against Nick Saban's men. This is a team that knows how to fight no matter what the level of the competition is. One Saturday to the next. So after the incomplete pass, McLeod throws it away to live to see second and 10. And just tackled from behind is Johnny Ford. Otherwise would have had another first down carry. Johnny Ford once again getting to the edges, doing what he does best. Destin Mack has got to come up a little bit quicker, a little bit sooner to make this tackle. Willie Eubanks doing everything that he can, diving at his shoestring, but corners. They got to come up a little bit quicker to support in this run game because South Florida is attempting to go ahead and try to run the ball down the throats the same way the Citadel offense is doing to the Bulls defense. Willie Eubanks is a senior, but with the NCAA announcement that this season would not count against the eligibility of any participants, he has a decision to make, could come back next year and improve his NFL draft grade. Here is Eubanks laying the hit. Ultimately, McLeod has no choice but to just get rid of the football. 
And Eubanks on the last two plays doing his best to get this Bulls offense off the field. As McLeod is struggling to find an open receiver and Willie Eubanks showing that senior leadership, rushing the quarterback, forcing him to make a quick decision. And as you can see, McLeod just has to throw it away. It's now fourth and four. And you can see South Florida has to punt the ball. Trent Schneider is back, the 30-year-old Trent Schneider, who's actually older than some of the members of the coaching staff for the Bulls, the Australian. Spent eight years as a construction worker. This is the first punt of the season for either team. And able to hang on to it is Dominic Poole, the freshman. Bulldogs able to get the ball back. Plenty of time to go to reclaim their second lead, perhaps. U.S. Open's men's championship match tomorrow for Eastern, one Pacific on ESPN. Our coverage begins with the men's preview show presented by Mercedes-Benz, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app. Lincoln Rose, Stanford route, helping kick off the 2020 college football campaign for both of these programs. Again, for the Citadel, the Southern Conference, along with the other FCS members of Division I, not playing football officially. They're hoping to get in a spring schedule and perhaps the FCS playoffs could take place as well. But Citadel and so many other programs were given the blessing from their conferences to pursue some games on the schedule this fall, a chance to bring in some money for their athletics departments including tonight, an opener against South Florida and their first-year head coach, Jeff Scott. And just tripped up by a blade of grass on this wet evening. As down goes Derek Hampton. Good job by Christopher Townsell staying outside, forcing the running back back inside. Derek Hampton losing his footing. Now you got a third and long. Gonna be interesting. I want to see what Glenn Spence is gonna go ahead and try to dial up, maybe confuse this Citadel offense a little bit in a Brandon Rainey. And yeah, this is not an offense built for third and eleven, but they do have confidence on that right arm of Rainey. Drops back, great protection, plenty of air underneath it, but even better coverage downfield from Mike Hampton. Randy Rainey dropping back, trying to, put, trying to put the ball right up there where he can go ahead and allow Riley Webb to go ahead and try to make a play on it. Mike Hampton at the last second getting his hand in there. Great pass breakup. No call by the referees, obviously, and South Florida's off the field. Well, all of a sudden, we have our national audience and we're showcasing the punters. As for the first time tonight, it'll be Matt Campbell coming out to Give this ball back to U.S. Uh, as his heels on his own goal line. Delay of game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. It's fourth down. Sometimes when you're punting the football, you intentionally take a delay of game. This is not one of those scenarios when you're already backed up to your own end zone. USF will happily accept. And Sales hoping for the chance to return this one. Ball through the fingertips under pressure. And this ball is a touchdown. Campbell unable to boot it away. And for USF, a little bit of good fortune on special teams. USF just got gift wrapped. <laughs> hey, touchdown right at their fingertips. I knew when they, whenever you saw the delay a game penalty, I thought that, you know what, this is not going to bowl well for the Citadel. This might come back to bite them. I did not think it's going to come back to bite them on this specific play. You can go ahead and see Matt Campbell trying to get the punt off. He bobbles it. Now he tries to go ahead and get it off again, and it, it goes off of his feet, five feet in the air, no distance, and South Florida has a gift wrap touchdown on special teams. And now it is 13-6 with the chance to be up 14-6. The freshman Omario Dollison with the greatest punt return of his career. <laughs> that probably will be the greatest punt return of his career. Uh, if you're Citadel, you got to find a way to bounce back. Obviously, we see that you can't have those types of mistakes on the special teams. They're very costly. But the Citadel, they have got to find a way to uh, respond to this big blow, to the momentum that they had. 
Well, you wanted to avoid the safety, but the only thing worse, the six points and a chance to tack on one more here. Struggles with the handling. That ball, a clang off the post. No good for Schrader. But the Bulls stretch their lead up by seven. After Dollison, Johnny on the spot. ESPN College Football is presented by Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. Well, after Denver's season-saving second-half comeback win in Game 5, we'll have Game 6 of the Western Conference Semi tomorrow between the Clippers and the Nuggets. Los Angeles up three games to two. It'll be at 1 Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. Well, you talk about special teams. Officially a punt of negative 10 yards. A return of zero as Dawson winds up with the football, standing on the goal line for the touchdown, and that means no offensive drive for the Bulls to follow. It's back to the Bulldogs, trying to get something going. Largest deficit they face here on the road here in this season opener. Nice return by Jalen Adams trying to get Citadel back up and going again, nearing up to 30 yard, nearing up about the 30 yard line. So we'll see exactly how the Citadel Bulldogs are able to bounce back, how they're able to answer the flurry of mistakes that cost them to give up a touchdown on special teams. Still just trailing by one score, however, inside seven minutes to go in this first half. And Brandon Rainey returns with a offensive line that he's very familiar with. Aiden Haas, Jonathan Toole, a couple of preseason all-conference standouts anchoring that line. And nothing fancy, just straight ahead. As they go back to Logan Bront. Good job by Nick Roberts coming up from his safety position, lowering the boom on a Logan Brock. He is not an easy guy to bring down. He's a low. Great job, Nick Roberts, setting his feet, getting low, firing through his hips, making this tackle for a minimal gain. So a couple yards there on first down, sets up second and long. Rainey just a little too far out ahead of Keith White. They love the speed. If White can get a hold of that ball, he's off to the races. And this is the Citadel's version of a play-action fake. Good job. Good play-action fake by Brandon Rainey. But he just misses him just a little bit off the fingertips of Keith White. That would have been a big play for Citadel. Now it's third and long. Yep. Third and eight after the short run and the incomplete pass. Rainey with a couple of options. And they do go with the speed, but he runs into his own quarterback. And the Citadel is looking to punt once again, but this time at least they are not in the shadows of their own end zone. And once again, the speed of the South Florida Bulls defense plaguing the Citadel success. Good job by Mike Hampton, the corner coming up, taking on the block by the lead blocker, showing that guess what? You know what? You're going to have to run it inside. You can't run outside of me, holding his leverage. Even though he did not make the tackle, he helped make the play. Much better look this time off the boot of Campbell. And there was no sign for a fair catch, though they did interfere with his ability to make the catch. KJ Sales hauls it in. They'll tax him yard to John at the end of the return. So again, season opener for both teams. Jeff Scott, first year head coach for USF. Catch interference. Seeking team number 45. 15-yard penalty. First down. Media timeout in the field. As Jeff Scott's offense will take the field when you rejoin us, the Bulls up by a touchdown in Tampa. This week, our Sunday night baseball game should be an interesting one. The Astros and Dodgers play the second game of a two-game set 
It's that first series back since Joe Kelly threw behind Alex Bregman and over the head of Carlos Correa. Of course, bench is cleared back on July 28th. Look forward to this one, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN. ESPN Deport this in the ESPN app. Of course, Dodgers' best record in baseball. Jeff Scott had a pretty good record as co-offensive coordinator at Clemson. His final five years of a 12-year stint up there with the Tigers helped lead them to that national championship right here at Raymond James Stadium at the end of the 2016 season when Hunter Renfro hauled that touchdown catch in the final seconds and wanted to honor him so much that he named his son Hunter. Uh, born this past month. Bulls with a touchdown on their previous drive and how about this off to the races Mr. Ford Johnny Ford will be pushed out of bounds around the 15 yard line well the Bulls have plenty of speed to match this system of Charlie Weiss Jr. and this time it's Ford out of the backfield and right there you can see Johnny Ford go starts off to his left puts his foot in the ground the missed tackle by uh, Marquise Blunt and then he's off to the races uh, crossing field back deep now in the Citadel territory, and now you can see the South Florida starting to really get their confidence and their momentum going. They can pick up another first down here inside the 14. McLeod will call his own number. A little hesitation. Flag thrown into the backfield after he picked up a yard. Jordan McLeod tonight, 8 for 12 passing. Ten yard penalty. It's first down. Holding call will back things up. Again, McLeod, eight for 12 passing, a touchdown strike, 71 yards through the air. So had a couple of carries for another nine yards. Johnny Ford a moment ago, his sixth carry has him over 60 yards on the ground in this first half. Bulls trying to get at least one more score in before halftime. And it is McLeod. Nice sell, able to get it inside the 10 yard line. A little bit of read option. McLeod takes it himself straight up the middle. Big gain. Now brings up about second and five, second and six, putting that foot in the ground, showing that speed, showing that athleticism. Citadel is going to have to find a way to try to go ahead and get their momentum back because now it's looking like South Florida is off and moving. And pardon me, this is actually Noah Johnson, your former Offensive Player of the Year out of the SWAC, the transfer from Alcorn State, an FCS program in its own right. Again, the SWAC not playing football this fall. But how about some critical snaps for one of the transfers behind Jordan McLeod? And now we got a third and four coming up. Noah Johnson now in the game. We got to see exactly is Citadel going to go ahead and change things up because they know they have a new quarterback in who's uh, inexperienced. The moment he's dreamt of, he's from right here in Tampa. Looking for someone to possibly pitch it to. Instead, he'll follow his blockers, and Noah Johnson is in. The hometown kid takes things over in the red zone and puts a fresh six points on the board here at Ray J. South Florida, Noah Johnson now putting their stamp on this game, coming in off the bench, spelling a Jordan McLeod. They, they give it to him. It's now a pass play. He decides that, you know what, nobody's open. I'm going to go ahead and run it. And then it just becomes big boy ball. He goes, puts his, puts his foot in the ground, puts his head down, runs behind his shoulder pads, and barrels into the end zone for the rushing touchdown. This season, for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. And thank you, Noah Johnson. Not bad for a backup. Bulls moving forward up 20 to 6. Citadel just with a touchback just a moment ago, though it was Noah Johnson with a touchdown. Doing a great job of scrambling. He finally decides that, you know what, I'm not going to find anybody open. I'm just going to run the ball. He barrels down, puts his shoulder in, uh, into the defense, and 
gets the touchdown. Obviously, you could tell that talking in with with uh, with head coach Jeff Scott this week, he was not anticipatory of thinking Noah Johnson was going to actually see the field, but here he is now making the most of his opportunity. So kudos to that young man. In life, you have to make the most of your opportunities because they may not come back a second time. Cade Forden was the other quarterback in the mix for the Bulls. Could very well see Cade before this night is over. And USF in the Citadel tonight playing in an empty Raymond James Stadium. It may not be the case when the Bulls return for their matchup against East Carolina next month. Before then, though, the Bulls go on the road for three straight games. South Florida has quite a few opponents, six of them with 10 wins or more last year. Meanwhile, the Citadel playing their first of four games this fall. Both teams knew what they had returning at quarterback, though Jordan McLeod was pushed by a couple of Division I transfers. Sure enough, got the start. Already a touchdown toss tonight. Noah Johnson with a touchdown carry. So far, passing grades for both. And you see for Kate Fortin, the transfer from Chapel Hill was one of the first recruits that Jeff Scott signed, relying a little bit more this year on Division I transfers than he plans to moving forward. Pitch to Brott, and it'll be a loss of two. Uh, breaking up the play, Bentley Sanders getting into the backfield, the strong safety. Bentley Sanders coming off the edge like a heat-seeking Mitchell, thwarting this option play tried out by Brandon Rainey and a Logan Brock. Great job, Bentley Sanders. This is teaching tape right here. Putting his helmet right in the thigh board of a Logan Brock. Now you have a second and 12 for Citadel. Wayne Boyles in on that stop as well. The first man to get his hands on the ball carrier. There's a good look at Mr. Boyles. Well, the pocket held up, tucking it down and a first down gain and then some about 15 yards when he needed 12 from Brandon Rainey. Brandon Rainey showing the true captain that he is, seeing that nobody's open, so you know what? Guys, I'll just run it myself. Sometimes as a quarterback in college football, you have to just go ahead and put the team on your back. Great job by Brandon Rainey, decided I gotta put my foot in the ground and I just gotta go get this first down. He was able to freeze a couple of defenders around him with the threat to throw. This time he does toss it, but will skip it to his receiver. And now South Florida has the Citadel in the position that they wanted them to be in all night. Well, now the Citadel has to actually go to the air game. That is not their strength. They love the run game. South Florida now with the two touchdown lead that they have is putting the Citadel now in the position where they have to play a game that is not conducive to the success that they've been outlined with Brent Thompson. Bulldogs briefly had a 3-0 lead in this ball game. Just one field goal since then. As USF's offense has accounted for two touchdowns and special teams has come through as well on a miscue from the Citadel. Now if you're a Lou Conte, you're down by two scores. It's third and eight. It's a minute left to go in the half. You've got to find something to try to go ahead and swing this momentum back to your team. You can't just keep it on the ground the entire time. You've got to try to get a little bit creative with this offense. Rainey, play action. Great protection, has his man downfield, hauled in, first down, the drive still alive, making the catch, Ryan McCarthy, the junior. Lincoln, I know you obviously know what a penny is, a nickel is, but this right here is what you call a dime. Brandon Rainey throwing over the shoulder, Ryan McCarthy putting it to where only he can get the ball or it's gonna be an incompletion. This is a big play for Citadel because now this puts them in scoring position with a chance to go ahead and get back into this game going into halftime. Now they're up against the clock here, just 60 ticks remaining. After that first down strike. Rainey able to run out of the pressure off his back foot and just beyond the outstretched arms of the man he found a moment ago, McCarthy. Just a little bit over the arms of Orion McCarthy on that play again. Now you can see that Citadel's trying to get a little bit looser with this game plan. They're trying to go ahead and air it out a little bit more. It's going to be interesting to see exactly what Luke Conte is now going to call on second and 10 with the ball on the 25-yard line. 
See if they're still comfortable running the football inside a minute to go. Rainey has the option taken away from him. That was Daquan Evans, the defensive back, who flashed right in front of him, and Rainey was smart enough not to pitch that ball for the lateral. But at the same time, valuable seconds coming off the clock. And that's going to prompt the Citadel to burn a timeout. Couple of Colby Kintner field goals tonight for the Bulldogs and their head coach Brent Thompson. Well, this was a valuable game to get on the schedule. Of course, uh, FCS programs try to get some contests on the road against the FBS. Even if it's not a win, it helps the budget of your athletic department. These guaranteed games. Their three games against FBS foes will bring in a little under a million dollars. It's not going to make up for the million dollars lost of not having any home games except for one this year. And also just for the camaraderie of the kids. They want to get out here and play the game that they've been known and loving ever since they were five, six years old. So you also want to see them have their fun and be able to go ahead and pull off some steam from being a bulldog, being a cadet. Third and eight, certainly within field goal range here. And Rainey's going to try to get them a little closer. See what they have in mind on fourth and two. Brandon Rainey once again just barreling forward, running behind his pass, the strong runner that he is, now brings up a fourth and short. I would not be surprised if Brent Thompson goes for this fourth down rather than kicking the field. They were 62% last year on fourth down attempts. It's a fourth and three for Rainey and company, and he's got it. That'll briefly stop the clock here. Once again, getting those tough yards. That's why he's the team captain. That's why Coach Thompson speaks so highly of him. He believes in him. And now we see the Citadel has a chance to go ahead and get some points out of this. Preferably, you'd want to see a touchdown rather than a field goal, but something to get on the board before you go into halftime. Another timeout to talk things over. Have to imagine. They'll be looking to air this football out. Well, USF forced a turnover on their first drive of 2020 defensively. Take this ball away from the Citadel. They knew there's going to be a lot of tough running from the Bulldogs. Triple option offense, similar to Navy, who lands on the schedule each year here in the American. And whenever you play against a team like it, there runs the triple option, you have to make sure that you are fundamentally sound, which means everybody has to be in their gap. You have to play with good eyes. And whenever you have a chance to take the ball away, you must capitalize on it. And that is something South Florida is doing well right now. So the Citadel converted fourth down and three a moment ago. This from the 13-yard line. Rainey able to get rid of it. Little collision downfield. Sanders in on the coverage as they're looking for Raleigh Webb. Finley Sanders, good coverage, forcing Brandon Rainey to make the errant throw to a Riley Webb. Obviously, he had tight coverage, tries to put it on the outside shoulder of, Rayleigh Webb, of Riley Webb, but cannot go ahead and thread the needle. Good job by Finley Sanders staying in the hip pocket, forcing the incompletion. Took four seconds off of the clock. Rainey is going to get dropped, actually throws that ball up in the air. That will be a fumble, take more time off the clock. And out of bounds with two seconds. We'll see where they mark it and make sure that they do, in fact, rule that a lateral. Glenn Spencer sending Antonio Greer in on the pressure, doing a great job now getting to Brandon Rainey, simply because you could see he was killing the South Florida defense with his legs and with his arm. Now brings up a third and long, and they're just going to go ahead and concede and kick the field goal. A 36-yard try here. Colby Kittner, two for his first two as a collegiate kicker. Off the post. Well, they were able to at least try the field goal before halftime. The Citadel will head to the locker room down. Just two scores here on a soggy Saturday in Tampa, but 
They couldn't be more excited to be playing college football here in 2020 as we have reached halftime. ESPN College Football presented by Dr. Pepper. You're watching the American Athletic Conference on ESPN. Members of the American, the Bulls of USF and their first year head coach, Jeff Scott, longtime offensive coordinator of the Clemson Tigers. Sees his Bulls put up 20 points in the opening half. Two touchdown lead over the visiting Citadel out of the Southern Conference. Lincoln Rose, Stanford Round and Stan. Bulldogs got the ball first, but that just meant that this defense led by Blake Green able to get their first turnover of the fall. Yes, definitely. Uh, it's been a tough game going on, but you could see that they got, they finally got their footing, getting some turnovers, and now South Florida is squarely in control of this game. The 45-yard field goal from freshman Colby Kentner would give the Bulldogs their first and only lead of the opening half. The Bulls would find success, their first touchdown strike through the air. Yes, obviously a uh, great throw by quarterback Jordan McLeod to a Trey Dukes, and that's what I think started everything going in South Florida's direction. 41-yard field goal would just sneak in as Kentner would start the game two for two, would miss one just before halftime as he accounts for all six of the first half points for the Citadel. Special teams for the Citadel, though, did gift wrap this one. <laughs> and Omarion Davison getting one gift wrap right in his hands, scoring probably the first defensive touchdown that he's probably had in his career. So definitely something that South Florida was able to capitalize on. Citadel having that that little sequence of having the holding call, moving them back on offense, and then the, the, the delay of game uh, in the punt game as well. They got to go ahead and clean up those errors because that really is what put this game so far in front for South Florida right now. You know, Johnson, the backup quarterback coming in in the red zone to punch one in for the Bulls and his new teammates after transferring over from Alcorn State out of the SWAC. Yes. Um, as we talked to coach earlier this week, he even mentioned how he wasn't quite sure if Noah was going to get much playing time this year. But you can see coming in, making the most of his opportunity, getting that rushing touchdown. And once again, like I said, Citadel, they're not completely out of this game, but they definitely have to do something quick starting off the second half to make sure it does not get out of hand. As you can, you see. Citadel will be kicking the ball off to start the second half when you rejoin us in Tampa. College football back underway. ESPN College Football is presented by Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. Well, the Bulls do have an American schedule to look forward to as their conference will compete in football. But first, of course, they head to number 10 Notre Dame next week, heading to South Bend. They actually have a road trip to Boca Raton to play at Ford Atlantic and then at Cincinnati to kick off conference play on October 3rd tonight. A matchup against the Citadel, a team that they knew would probably gamble if needed. There you see what is on the horizon for Jeff Scott's men. As the Citadel, they were not going to look past this group knowing that with only four games on the schedule for the FCS program, they were going to throw everything at them, including they'll kick it short here to begin the second half. All right, Felix was ready. So presumably that's where Jordan McLeod will bring out the offense with a two touchdown lead to begin the second half. I want to mention just a unique moment at halftime while the marching band is not allowed on the field nor most fields this college season. We did see a virtual performance up on the scoreboard of the USF Herd of Thunder Athletics Band. Company and I believe by the USF Sundolls drill team as well. So their presence was felt. With that said, no fans in attendance here tonight. We expect that to change when they return October 10th for their home conference opener against the Pirates of East Carolina. Bulls will start on the ground 
cutting right through. Up the middle, down the sideline, one man to beat for Kelly Joyner. And it'll be a first down and then some into Bulldogs territory. And this is just big boy ball right here. South Florida getting that offensive push, getting the penetration, giving the ball straight to Kelly Joyner. And I think he probably ran maybe 10 yards before anybody even laid a finger on him. And then scampers down the sideline for a big game, South Florida Bulls. He really had a great fall camp returning from that long hiatus this offseason. Back over to Randall St. Felix. I believe that's his second catch today, trying to get him once again on the edges. The cadets, I'm sorry, the Bulldogs of the Citadel doing a good job of making the minimal gain on that. Now brings up second and nine. St. Felix was your favorite receiver two years ago as a freshman. Last year, 22 grabs. And just behind the receiver and a pop for good measure after Bryce Miller had that ball thrown behind him. South Florida going a little bit to that RPO scheme again. The run pass option. Jordan Cloud. McLeod showing the run fake. He has the option to pass. A little bit of an errant throw. And now Citadel getting a chance to get in front of the chains again. We got third and long. Let's see what they can do if they can get off the field. Third and 11. They need the 14-yard line off the back foot to St. Felix, who has to elude the first defender unable to do so we see the bulls trot out their field goal unit for the first time this season and once again sean thomas faulkner coming up there trying to throw the receiver jailbreak screen to a randall st felix and sean thomas faulkner comes up beats the block and is able to make the tackles now fourth and long south florida has to kick the field goal this right here is a great tackle great teaching tape for sean faulkner because if he does not make this tackle, there's a chance that St. Felix could possibly go and bring up, uh, for, get a first down. And this one wide right from Schrader. So the Bulls start the third quarter off with the football, but empty handed at the end of their first drive. Citadel with the ball when we return. Kick off your week one NFL Sunday, 10 a.m. Eastern with the countdown crew on ESPN and the ESPN app. Joe Montana, Brett Favre, and Peyton Manning reflect on changing teams late in their careers with Tom Brady about to do the same right here in Tampa. Plus, Randy's best You Got Moss moments from the offseason and get an all-access pass inside the stadiums for a season unlike any other kicks off. NFL back on Sundays. Of course, got started on Thursday night. College football's been underway now for a couple of weeks. But this is the opener for both USF as well as the Citadel. As the first down toss to Keith White will set up second and short. Bulldogs able to avoid giving up points to the Bulls there on that first drive of the third quarter. Ultimately, USF having to settle for a field goal, unsuccessful. And now you have a third and short. I think you're probably going to see maybe some naked boot, something maybe like an option, things like that for Brandon Randy. I think that Luke Conte is going to want to keep this ball still on the ground and see what he can get going. Third and two for Brandon Rainey and this Bulldogs offense. Rainey sees a little bit of daylight. And that should be enough. That will move the sticks for a first down and keep this drive moving. Citadel is going to lean hard on Brandy Rainey uh, just running the show in this second half because he's been the one most reliable threat that they've had thus far. They put the ball in his hands every play. He's a team captain. He's someone that they believe in that can go ahead and get this team going. Rainey opts to keep it this time and then is immediately embraced from those big arms of Thad Mangum. Thad Mangum getting penetration, the one thing that kills the triple option run game. Penetration gets to the backfield, goes and sacks Brandon Rainey before he can do anything with the ball. And this is exactly what South Florida needed to go ahead and get Citadel behind the chains.
Second and 12, need the 47 yard line. As the pitch to White, unable to get around the edge, maybe a couple gained before brought down by Vincent Davis. Lincoln, Vincent Davis plays what they call the star position for the South Florida Bulls, and this is exactly what a star does. Heat seeking missile, getting his head across, putting his shoulder pad on the thigh board of a Keith White. Great tackle by a uh, by uh, Vincent Davis and yeah, that star role. Very exciting about the Jacksonville natives' physicality. Yeah, it says he has a little nasty element to him back there. He definitely showed it right there. Rainey, nothing doing. This Bulls defense picking up the slack. Dwayne Boyles again. Dwayne Boyles once again doing exactly what his ask of him being gap sound, staying at home, not going for the fake, and opening up the opening up the run lanes for Brandon Rainey. That's what you do when you stop the triple option. It is assignment sound football, and Dwayne Boyles doing his assignment at the best possible level, highest possible level for the South Florida Bulls. Matt Campbell did not kick the sails the last time he got his boot into this one. Much better punt this time around. The fair catch inside the 15-yard line. That's where the Bulls will begin their second drive of the third quarter. Our halftime score still holding up. Bulls up by 14. The 51st season of Monday Night Football kicks off with our annual Week 1 doubleheader. Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers take on Saquon Barkley and the Giants at 7 Eastern. Then, after that one's over, we'll take you to Denver for the Titans and Broncos. Both games are on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. A special edition of Monday Night Countdown kicks off our coverage 5 Eastern to Pacific. Of course, we are kicking off Football in the American, a couple of teams ranked in the preseason top 25 of the Associated Press. High expectations for both the Bearcats and the Knights. Another four teams in this deep league this year receiving votes in the top 25. Uh, the format this year, one division, 11 teams. And of course, Jeff Scott, uh, one of two new head coaches this year. Memphis already off to winning start last weekend over Arkansas State. As of today, that win looks even better. Arkansas State knocking off K-State, rough day for the Big 12. Yeah, definitely. Bouncing back from this pandemic, I was under the assumption that you probably would see some teams struggle out of the gate because of everything being in flux with all the offseason workouts being postponed. So Noah Johnson out of the shotgun, your quarterback right now for USF. Already a touchdown run tonight, and that time able to pick up the first down through the air. And just throwing the little quick out to Xavier Weaver. You got Destin Mack playing off coverage, and they're just simply taking it. What the uh, what the Citadel defense is going to give them. That is his first throw as the Bulls quarterback. Able to break some tackles, make some people miss, and all that dancing accounts for maybe a four-yard gain for Johnny Ford. Nifty footwork by Johnny Ford. <laughs> you could clearly see Willie Eubanks is coming in there trying to bring him the boom. Does a great job sidestepping him and now brings up a second and manageable situation. Bulls had to settle for a field goal try on their last drive. Three touchdowns in the first half, including one on special teams. Johnson down the middle, a bullet for a first down into the arms of Miller again. Bryce Miller is going to benefit from this new offense for the Bulls as your slot receiver. This is what you call a simple dice concept for South Florida. Noah Johnson drops back to pass, sends Bryce Miller right across the middle. That's his outlet. That's the guy he knows is going to be open, delivers the strike, and now we got a first down. From the 39. Oh, able to lead the receiver, just could not connect with Dukes. And now Noah Johnson get himself into a little bit of trouble. He tried to lead Trey Dukes a little bit too much on this. And you can see Jay Howard sitting there ready to break on the ball. And he's lucky that that did not wind up going for six points the other way. Nice break by Jay Howard. Comes after Johnson had completed his first two passes attempted. 
Second and ten, need the 49 yard line. And a solid stiff arm from Johnny Ford to buy maybe an extra yard or two before he's finally dragged down. Willie Eubanks doing great going from side to side, now matching the steps of Johnny Ford. This is exactly why he's already on draft board. Some say Willie Eubanks because of his ability to be able to scrape and get to the edges and be able to tackle these speedy backs that you now see in today's college football landscape. A lot of folks uh, in the greater Tampa area screaming perhaps for a horse collar tackle there, but no flag. Johnson on third and six and goes ahead and just picks up the first down finding St. Felix. This is just pitch and catch right here. You could see Destin Mack uh, trying to go ahead and communicate with the safety. Didn't appear to like everybody was on the same page. But one thing's for sure, if you go and you give the speed of the South Florida receivers room, if you give them space, they are going to take advantage of it and just move the ball down the field. And Noah Johnson, your quarterback, that is a lateral out wide to Miller, who will bring it upfield for about a five-yard gain. And now it appears that South Florida is starting to go ahead and dig deep into their bag of tricks, dig deep for Charlie Weiss Jr. to see exactly what plays he can use going forward for the remainder of the season. Now they're, going, they're trying to get creative. Uh, Citadel has got to go ahead and get back on track and get some stops on defense. You saw there it is a wet ball that these teams are dealing with rained all day here in Tampa and the Bay Area. Johnson stretches out for a three yard gain. Needs another three to keep this drive moving. Citadel has got to go ahead and come up with a stop here. You're down by two scores. It's about six and a half minutes left to go in the third quarter. This is still a game that they can easily get back in, but you have to get a stop. You have to go ahead and put the ball back in the hands of Brandon Rainey. On third and three, able to make one defender miss, but the second was too much to ask, especially when that second defender is Parrish Gordon coming in to clean things up. Parrish Gordon, your backup safety from the backup to Chris Beverly, who knocked himself out of the game earlier. This is a great job. This is teaching tape once again for safeties to show coming straight downhill and putting your helmet, putting your shoulder pads in the center of his chest, making a nice tackle. Already has his undergraduate degree in his back pocket. Five and a half to go. Bulls showing that they're going to go for it, and they do. But a timeout before the snap. So USF has something to think about. Currently up 20 to 6 here in the third quarter. Neither team has put points on the board here in the second half. What does Jeff Scott have in mind here in his debut as a college football head coach? Monday, Steelers Giants, then Titans Broncos. Monday Night Football on ESPN. Well, the folks around the Southern Conference very familiar with their defending defensive player of the year, Willie Eubanks III. Again, he is a senior, though might have the luxury of coming back next year if he wants to improve his NFL draft grade. Probably could find himself as a free agent this year. On rosters going into next season, again, the NCAA announced that this fall season would not count against eligibility. As the Bulls opt to simply punt this football away. And Trent Schneider, second punt of the ball game. And they'll pin the Citadel back inside their own 10. Well, and again, some of the uh, notable games already today. Those raging Cajuns with a victory over the men from Ames, Iowa. Their first victory since 1996 against a top 25 foe. Notre Dame is on the schedule for the Bulls next week. They able to take care of the Blue Devils. And Arkansas State also victorious over a Big 12 program over the Wildcats of K-State, grabbing that one late. A non-conference matchup here, Division I FCS, the Citadel out of the Southern Conference. 
Squaring off against the Bulls of USF. Bulls right now up by two touchdowns. This one's far from over, but at the same time, the Bulls didn't want to show too much of their playbook knowing what they have ahead of them on the schedule. Oh, yeah. They got three games coming up of teams that all had 11 wins last year. You definitely don't want to tip your hand right away, especially against this game opening up uh, with the Citadel. But nonetheless, you still want to make sure that you have a productive uh, um, performance this week, starting off after everything's been pushed back with the pandemic. Rainey drops back, has the protection. Well, we'll just throw it away wisely to live to see the next down on a very manageable distance. Mike Hampton back in coverage, kind of yo-yoing a little bit, playing a little cat and mouse game with a, uh, a Brandon Rainey. He was a little bit kind of hesitant to throw that, did a good job with just being the smart guy that he is and throwing the ball out of bounds. It's now third and two. You still have a chance to go ahead and pick up this first down. Rainey's three for 10 passing tonight for 67 yards, threw for 1,100 last year. Solid numbers for a triple option quarterback. They need a yard, not going to get it. The Bulls stiffen up and come up with the stop. It'll be fourth down. Rashawn Yates doing a great job of staying at home. He's coming from the backside. They clutter up the middle. They get penetration. Rainey is not able to have a clear running lane, so he stutters his feet. Good job running it down from the back end, Rashawn Yates. And they look like they'll go for it, at least trying to get the Bulls to jump off Sun. The pitch, need to get to that corner. It's a first down. The gamble pays off. Keith White gets just enough. Keith White getting those tough yards. That's where, he, that's where he's at his best. Barreling through. You know that you only need one, so you got to go ahead and just dip your shoulder and go ahead and provide some punishment against his South Florida defense. And he's the fastest of their A-backs, able to get to the edge just beat Bentley Sanders to the spot. So the Citadel, who started this drive, pinned back after the Bulls opted to punt. Gamble on fourth down deep in their own end. Open for a long drive to pull this back with them to touchdown. Rainey able to follow a block and will fall forward for a seven-yard gain. Just building confidence here late in the third quarter. And this is exactly what Citadel needs. They need to go ahead and just string together some positive plays. And then eventually, you can probably get into South Florida territory. And then you're in scoring range. And then you'll just see what happens. But first and foremost, you've got to go ahead and string together the positive plays. Because if you don't, South Florida is going to be able to go ahead and start chopping at the bit. You see guys like DuPlain Bros having a great game. You want to make sure that you can keep them off balance and stay ahead of the chains. Rainey was 61 yards rushing on the ground. Citadel has produced a 100-yard rusher in their last six season openers, but this is not going to help their cause on this drive. This is what hurt them on the punt when they had to delay a game and back them up. It's very, very difficult to sustain any level of success as an offense whenever you have pre-snap penalties. Citadel ran for 320 yards against Georgia Tech last year in that overtime victory. Ripped off 275 yards on the ground against Alabama two years ago, again when they made their way to halftime even with the Crimson Tide, 10 apiece. Couple touchdowns behind at halftime here tonight in Tampa. Rainey finds his man, and in that, just like that, it's another easy six yards, chewing up some turf. Cooper Wallace gets the penalty yardage and then some back. Once again, Brandon Rainey holding on to that option, deciding to go ahead and pitch it late to a Cooper Wallace getting some more tough yards. And now we have a flag. Going to be uh, very interested to see exactly who this is going to be on. So that'll back up the Bulldogs after otherwise a nice game. Personal foul blocking the back on Ray, on Riley Webb. That is something that once again you can ill afford to have happen when you're in this situation. When you're down two touchdowns, you're already in your own territory. You just had a false start by a blocking team. You cannot go ahead and compound that with now another personal foul. So once again, Citadel has got to slow down, 
they got to go ahead, take a breath, and get back on track. So I'm looking for a Lou Conte to go ahead and throw in a play action pass, something like that right now, so you can get back in a manageable situation to possibly go for it on fourth down to get the first down conversion. We've mentioned how this game can help the Bulls prepare for that triple option of Navy later in the year. You could argue for the Citadel, this game is prepping them for their next game against a certain team in Clemson, South Carolina. <laughs> oh, definitely. Obviously, we see that they're going against a little bit of that with the Jeff Scott. That you got to use this game as a building block for the games ahead. Let's get the official call. We'll take a look at the schedule. Those aren't just the first four games. Those are the only four games on the 2020 schedule for the Bulldogs. They head to number one Clemson. That will be on ACC Network. Eastern Kentucky will be the one home game as they welcome the visitors from the Ohio Valley Conference. And then they'll wrap up against Army West Point. And tonight, season opener against the Bulls. This was not originally on the schedule. One of the many adjustments by college coaches around the country. And you may need a little back realignment after that adjustment from Vincent Davis. These defensive backs love to hit. Once again, playing that star position and doing it at a high level. Vincent Davis, heat-seeking missile. They try to go on the option again to Derek Hampton this time, and Vincent Davis showing exactly why he is the guy at the star role and starring at that role for this defense. Glenn Spencer is probably in love with this kid. So third and 18 for the Citadel. Rainey. Able to drop it down, and it's through the hands of White. Oh, got a little pushing and shoving. Got a little extracurricular activity. A little bit of an errant throw by Brandon Rainey. Had him over there in the flats, Keith White, but could not bring it in. You could see Boyles was trailing. Could have been a potential for a big play if it would have been more on target. But now Citadel through the penalties with the false start and the block in the back now has to go ahead and punt the ball. Will there be deja vu? Matt Campbell, last time he was standing in his end zone, ball slipped through his fingertips, not this time. Sales calls for the fair catch up at the 45 for USF. 32 seconds away from the end of the third quarter. Still have our halftime score intact of 20 to six. Lincoln, I don't know about you, but we can clearly see that South Florida is up two scores. But it does not feel like this game is over. It does not feel like it's out of reach. It still seems like Citadel still has the ability to go ahead and get back in this thing. Well, we saw the Bulls go to their backup quarterback last drive. They're going to bring the starter, Jordan McLeod, back out. You imagine his night was not going to be done, considering he still needs some more time out there before Notre Dame next week. Ranked this past weekend, number 10 in the country, Fighting Irish. Victory earlier today over Duke. And that is technically a pass completion. Able to break some tackles and actually find perhaps the original line of scrimmage. After it's all said and done, Latrell Williams has not been utilized much here tonight. Trying to use the speed guy to get him on the edges. And you could see just a missed tackle by Marquise Blunt. Could have been a big tackle for loss. Now it's just two-yard loss. Now it brings up a second and 12. But nonetheless, good job by the Citadel defense on first down, pursuing to the ball. Uh, Marquise Blunt did not make the tackle, but he helped make the play. Both defenses prevailed in that third quarter. The ultimate period coming up here on ESPNU. USF has a second and 11 coming up to start the fourth quarter. Right now, up by two scores, Lincoln Rose along with Stanford Route. And I want to definitely go ahead and get some special admiration for starting corner for the USF, I'm sorry, the South Florida Bulldogs. 
that uh, organizing a unity walk in downtown Tampa, his hometown, already having aspirations, political aspirations, with uh, to becoming one day the mayor of of, of Tampa, um, already uh, having aspirations, having connections with the mayor, and doing the unity walk, something that is so imperative that today's players are actually using their platform for the good for the better and realizing that you know what they can affect change yeah it was kj sales the senior from tampa who led that walk and planned it from its entirety uh, jeff scott walked side by side with him along with their team down central avenue through kj's old neighborhood a historic neighborhood in tampa just like tonight it was a rainy day did not deter them however an important message, like many student athletes having their voices be heard this summer and now this fall. So again, it is second and 11 from the 44 to start this fourth quarter. Both defenses pitching a shutout there in that third frame. McLeod, your quarterback. And getting the hit, essentially no gain after the Stopped by Marquise Blunt, preseason all SOCON, the junior out of Charlotte. Once again, Marquise Blunt coming up, making a big tackle in the run game. This now brings up a third and a long 11 for the South Florida Bulls, a chance to get off the field if you're the Citadel Bulldogs. Blunt back after missing the final four games to injury last year, came back with a completely redefined body, added 30 pounds of muscle this year. And again, third and 11 for McLeod and company. Need to get to the 45 of the Citadel. Runs right into the arms of pressure, and McLeod will not be able to shake free. Bulldogs come up with a stop, and they are still in this ball game, about to get the football back. And once again, who is the guy? Wherever you find the ball, it is Willie Eubanks doing a great job rushing the quarterback, maintaining his rush lane, staying outside, then retraces, getting McLeod on the ground, brings up now fourth and 17, and they got to punt the ball back to the Bulldogs. First an injury to sort through before the Bulldogs take the field. Fourth quarter in Tampa. U.S. Open's men's championship match tomorrow. 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific on ESPN. Our coverage begins with the men's preview show presented by Mercedes-Benz, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app. Lincoln Rose, Stanford route with you here in the fourth quarter where USF stopped on third down by the Citadel, about to give this football back. And looking for a return from the 20-yard line. Not much doing there. Ooh, in pursuit from Bentley Sanders. Lincoln, I know you remember when we were talking to, uh, with Coach Brent Thompson, He one of the models he likes to live by is C2C, challenge uh, into championship. Well, guess what? Citadel, right now, they're down by two scores. They have a chance to go ahead and get back into this game. Are they going to accept this challenge and try to get out and be triumphant in this game? When they've had struggles, they've often been running into the man wearing the 11 in gold and green, Dwayne Boyles, the junior out of Miami, their top returning tackler. 12 and a half times he was in the backfield last year, including three sacks, already making an impact here tonight. And a modest gain on first down for the Bulldogs. This is their largest deficit of the night, carrying over from the second quarter. Bulldogs have, uh, have not se allowed the Bulls to pull away. Of course, both these teams very excited to finally suit up and get this comp uh, schedule started. Though Jeff Scott made it a point to emphasize that being excited is not enough simply to win a football game. His men needed to execute. Right now, they are winning the turnover battle, something that plagued them last year, one of the worst teams in all of the FBS. Tonight, a plus one. And the Citadel showing sometimes they have their miscues with penalties, which has held them back. Well, they're still possibly in this game. Good run by Keith Wright. 
now bringing up a third and a long one yard. They need the 31 yard line. Rainey will call his own number and he easily has it. Balls forward for three. That keeps the Bulls offense off the field a little bit longer. Gives the Bulldogs hope of cutting this deficit in half. I believe moments like this are very critical for the South Florida Bulls and obviously the, the Citadel Bulldogs because this game could go either way. If you the Citadel, you can get back in it. South Florida, get a stop, and you put this game on ice. And nothing doing on first down. That victory over Georgia Tech last year for the Bulldogs was their first of six wins last season. They finished 6-6, six and six, easily could have been closer to 8-4. and four. They lost on the last drive to Towson to start the season, another member of the FCS, and then with the hurricane that forced them from home that second week, really never had a chance to get their feet under them. Still played it tight to the fourth quarter before heading to Atlanta for their first victory of last season. They return their All-American quarterback, Brandon Rainey. May have been a little miscommunication. Rainey still poised, throws his receivers down. They're hoping for a flag. Not going to get help here. Definitely a lot of miscommunication with the Citadel offense with Brandon Rainey and his receivers. Seemed like he wasn't quite sure whenever he took the snap from center. They got to go ahead and get back on track because now, once again, they're forced to a third down and a nice, a long 11. And that is something that is not the way their offense is set up to be in third and long situations. Going to connect with Keith White. Bulldogs are now just three of 12 passing. Third and 11. Trying to stretch out the Bulls defense. Webb. Raleigh Webb just about a yard and a half short. Fourth down coming up. And it looks like it might be coming back. And it's flags like this that could be possible oh, back break. Necessary roughness. Defense number seven. No, it'll be a first down. 15 yard penalty added to the end of the play. First down. Bulldogs, beneficiaries of the personal foul. A little bit of misdirection to a Riley Webb getting on the corner, getting on the edges now, and you tack on the personal foul with the South Florida defense. Guess what? Citadel is now in Bulls territory with a chance to go ahead and now put some points on the board. And then, you know what, Lincoln? We got a game in the fourth quarter opening with college football. And eight FBS victories for the Citadel over the years. Looking to kick off 2020 with one here in one of just their four games this fall. And again, right back into the arms of Thad Mangum. Once again, South Florida getting that push, getting that penetration, not allowing Brandon Rennie to get going like he did in the first half. That is something that the South Florida Bulls will have to excel at these last 10 plus minutes if they want to go ahead and secure this victory. No touchdown tonight for the Citadel. They've settled for three field goal attempts, connecting on their first two from the freshman, Colby Kentner. And this snap never getting off before the false start. Once again, the pre-snap penalties have plagued the Citadel offense. This time you got Prince Howard Whitaker with the false start. It's, it's, it's penalties like that that really drive coaches crazy because those can be backbreakers for the success, for the momentum that an offense can go ahead and generate and start creating. I don't think they're going to blame the crowd noise playing on the road here tonight. <laughs> Rainey, great protection. But just cannot link up with McCarthy. And he's trying to hit McCarthy right across the middle. That's that dice concept that I was speaking about earlier. But McCarthy has got to bring this in. You've got to go ahead and help your quarterback. Nick Roberts goes ahead, gives him a little pop just for good measure. And now, once again, you're putting the Citadel Bulldogs in a long yardage situation. That is not something that is conducive for the way that their offensive team is set up. Well, they converted a little bit earlier on a fourth down. Don't have to ponder that just yet it is third down here and 15 rainy able to roll out and excellent coverage by Bentley Sanders 
And now it is fourth down. Just a simple sprint out by Brandon Rainey. Could not find an open receiver. Tries to go ahead and thread the needle on the sideline. And Bentley Sanders selling out with the tight coverage. Now, once again, you got a fourth and long, long 15 for Citadel. So KJ Sales expects another punt to come his way. Campbell stands back inside his own 40. Sales cleanly at the 14, but there will be no gain after the fact. After he is dropped by Faulkner. So the Bulls will be pinned back. With that said, they have already a two touchdown lead in place. It is the fourth quarter here in Tampa. Well, after Denver's season-saving second-half comeback win in Game 5, we'll have Game 6 of the Western Conference semis tomorrow between Kawhi and the Clippers against the Nuggets. Los Angeles up three games to two. Again, that's 1 o'clock Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. Bulls beginning the Jeff Scott era, but you could argue the Jeff Scott era when it came to being a college football fan actually started up in Charleston, South Carolina, the, in the backyard of the Citadel. Yes, that is the young toddler Jeff Scott. First football game he ever attended was at the Citadel back when his dad, Brad Scott, was just a graduate assistant on the staff. Of course, Brad Scott would go on to be head coach at South Carolina, successful coordinator for Florida State, and most recently, a co-worker of his son at Clemson on the staff, part of those national championships. And the Bulls on first down, able to bring it up past the 40-yard line before a big lick is laid on Kelly Joyner. And he does not immediately pop back up. The Bulls just running the ball to the left off tackle with Kelly Joyner. Now he reverses field all the way back, showing that breakaway speed that he has. Big game for the South Florida Bulls. And yes, it looks like he might have got a little bit nicked right up top. So going to be interesting to see exactly uh, if he goes back into the game because now you're up by two scores. You're Jeff Scott. Do you want to go ahead and actually put your starting running back at risk for possible further injury? How about his quarterback, Noah Johnson, running interference for him down the field? Johnson back in at quarterback. And Jordan McLeod, your starter. Johnson had the last score of this ball game for either team when he took it himself, calling his own number zero for the touchdown run back in the second quarter. This time he'll hand it off to Batie. And Brian Batie, nice chunk of yardage, a nine yard gain across midfield. And now you're starting to get the feeling that South Florida is starting to wear on this Bulldog defense, starting to, starting to lean on them. And because of that depth that South Florida has that Citadel doesn't, that's when the D-linemen, the linebackers start getting a little bit winded. You're down here in this Florida heat. So that might start playing a part in these last nine minutes going down the stretch. Batie, the freshman, with his first collegiate carry. You see Green coming off for the Citadel defense. So into Bulldog territory. Johnson under pressure, and he will be dropped for the sack by Marquise Blunt. Marquise Blunt has been all over the field tonight, Lincoln. I know you've been watching this game right along with me. And now this kid is adding pass rushing to his repertoire, getting around the end. Wasn't even a wasn't even a fair fight. And now you got South Florida second and 12. Citadel still is not out of this game. I know that they're up by two scores, but you know what? Anything can happen as long as they keep fighting. Second and 12 from their own 49 this time. Johnson, straight ahead. Johnson out to the edge. Johnson has a first down back into Bulldog territory and out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Now Noah Johnson, you get a finger to the eye here. Another look at the run. South Florida was in need of a big play, so you know what? They just give it to the guy back there uh, collecting the ball behind center and just tell him, you know what? Go do what you do. Run the ball, find the creases in the defense, and get over there and give me a first down, and that's exactly what he did. And now it looks like he's a bit shaken up. 
They'll come in and look at Noah. Not sure if it's a contact lens. Uh, it gives him an opportunity to bring water out to some of his teammates here on a muggy evening in Tampa. Had that touchdown run back in the second quarter, right before the end of the first half. Well, depth is not a concern for USF. A look at the last play. Looks like maybe he just got a, his helmet twisted. Maybe that got, maybe that's what shook him up a little bit. Yeah, no face masks called on the play. McLeod hands it off this time as he's back into the ball game. Ball carrier is Dollison. Last time we saw Dollison with the football, gifted a touchdown on special teams. A return of zero yards for the touchdown back in the first half. And has already done his rounds on social media tonight. And just trying to get him on the edges with the jet sweep. Doing a good job of breaking the tackle of Willie Eubanks, South Florida. Looking like they might get another score. From 12 yards out, Bulls eyeing another trip into the end zone. It's going to be a nine-yard gain. It's going to be second and one. Another chance to pick up a first down before they have to punch it in. And that's a nice play call there for the freshman, Batiste. And here it goes once again. South Florida trying to lean on that Bulldog defense, try to go ahead and wear them down, impose their will. And it's looking like they might very well be on the verge of doing that because, once again, you see the Bulldogs are starting to look a little bit shaken up. They're starting to look like they might be getting a little bit dehydrated, start cramping up. This is Florida. We all know that it's still very humid this time of the year in the Sunshine State. This is where just being in a different climate, just being in a different situation with the depth of the South Florida is playing into their hands late into the fourth quarter. Bulls with 260 yards rushing tonight, eight different ball carriers. You would think they perhaps were the triple option team. Again, McLeod, your start, starting quarterback back in. One touchdown through the air tonight. Will he look for a big target? They'll keep it on the ground. Looking for blocking up front, and the signal is a touchdown. Into the end zone, Kelly Joyner. And back to the basic South Florida goes to Kelly Joyner. Off tackle, barreling into the end zone. Now seemingly putting this game almost pretty much out of reach for South Florida Bulls. Citadel doing everything they can, trying to go ahead and right the ship, trying to plug up all the leaks. But oftentimes in games like this, when you're playing against a team from an FBS, they have more depth than you. They're bigger, and that's where, obviously, you see where this game is going. And Schrader is back on track with the extra point. So the scoreboard operator comes out of quarantine after not needing to lift a finger in the third quarter. The Bulls extend their lead up by three. Looking for the dub in the first game under the belt of head coach Jeff Scott. Kelly Joyner got the football 71 times last year as a freshman, unable to find that first collegiate touchdown, but able to do it on his eighth carry in his sophomore campaign. Three yard touchdown run, gives him 87 yards on the ground tonight. Ripped off that 41 yarder a little bit earlier this evening here in Tampa. As the Bulls find the first score of the second half to grow their lead out by 21. A little bobble before the return from Adams. They have bought him a little bit of time to bring it out past the 25, still fighting for yardage and down around the 29-yard line. Well, again, the Bulldogs, not your traditional triple option. They do have a passing game with Brandon Rainey, although tonight Rainey just 3 of 14 passing. He was much better early in this game. But USF has to imagine he's going to be trying to air it out a little bit more often with limited time to overcome a three-score deficit. Yes, and now if you're the Citadel, obviously we see that this game is really getting close to being out of reach. But you want to make sure that you can go ahead and build up, get some nice positive plays, and that way the next three games after this one, you can go ahead and get some continuity, get some confidence, get some momentum, because it's only going to be a four-game season for you. So you have to get some positivity out of the remaining six and a half minutes of this game. The Clemson's a bounce-back game. 
It might be. Who Rainey. knows? We've seen a lot of uh, upsets already. Not a six yard gain before big shoulder escorts Cooper Wallace out of bounds. And the Citadel obviously still doing what they do. They're not going to go completely to the air like they're the Atlanta Falcons or they're the Kansas City Chiefs. They can still keep it on the ground and they're going to try to go ahead and will their way back to at least making this a respectable score. Citadel did get their full spring season in before coronavirus officially shut things down in this country. Rainey having to get rid of that football after he was under attack. And now a flag comes into the backfield. They thought perhaps a little extra effort there. I believe that was Blake Green, the nose tackler. Actually, part of me, Tramel Logan. Yes, it was putting a little bit of hot sauce on his tackle of Brandon Rainey. But now at your Citadel, go ahead, take a shot. Like, don't be just completely conservative. Do something. Try to go ahead and get something going. Well, they'll keep it on the ground here, and they'll lose a couple of yards and some clock. As Cooper Wallace taken down in the backfield. And this is a fantastic play by Christopher Townsend getting to the sideline, making sure that you are scraping, getting from east to west. And this South Florida defense still, once again, using the superior speed that they have to slow down the Citadel, air, um, the, Cit the Citadel perimeter rushing attack. Second and 13. Rainey, eyes downfield, not on the same page. And at the last second, you can see Raleigh Webb thinking, maybe I can draw a flag here. No such luck. Once again, the Citadel trying to do the play action faker, a little bit of the delay to try to go ahead and get the South Florida defense off balance, try to go ahead and catch them sleeping. And you can clearly see Nick Roberts staying on top of Raleigh Webb, upfield shoulder, exactly the way the coach on the defense side of the ball, Glenn Spencer, draws it up. Great coverage now, third and long once again. Another passing situation for the Citadel. that has been the best receiver this past decade for the Citadel as part of that has the ability to play with his former high school teammate and Brandon Rainey here at the college level. As they've been playing pitch and catch for quite a while, Webb may even have borderline NFL grade. And it's looking like now Citadel's not even going to try to go for this four down. Brandon Rainey, you can see jogging off of the field. So maybe Citadel is going to go ahead and just throw in the towel, want to make sure that they don't get anybody hurt. They want to have everybody healthy for the remaining three games that they have on their schedule. So looking like now you can see uh, uh, Xavier, Xavier out on the field to go ahead and uh, corral the punt. Xavier Weaver is going to be given a chance here in the return game, but no opportunity to scoop that one out. A nice punt from Matt Campbell. Pins the Bulls back. USF offense will step back out. Fewer than five minutes to play in a season opener. Looking to pick up win number one. ESPN College Football is presented by Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. Well, a tough schedule ahead for Jeff Scott here in his maiden voyage as a head coach at the collegiate level. Of course, no shortage of success in his last stop as an assistant the past decade plus. Running the offense at Clemson, you look at a lot of the men he has graduated on to the NFL. In fact, the last player that his father, Brad Scott, recruited to Clemson, a certain individual, Sammy Watkins, whom they cheered on. And the Super Bowl and Ray Ray McLeod up there in Pittsburgh, the older brother of current Bulls quarterback Jordan McLeod. And just to complete this whole circle, of course, Brad Scott, a graduate of USF before he took that grad assistant gig in Charleston at the Citadel, where Jeff Scott was born. Bulls able to work in some of their depth here and able to keep that clock running. The first down run, able to stay in bounds that time. First touch of the ninth, ninth ball carrier we've seen. It's Sariki, the senior. Adeneo Sariki. And 263 263 yards rushing on the ground tonight for the Bulls. 
They're still going to air it out some. Quarterback for USF is Travis Marsh, a freshman. And now it looks like Jeff Jeff Scott is going to try is trying plays that he's looking to use throughout the entirety of the season to see exactly how they work right now in this game that is clearly in the Bulls' hand. You saw them still willing to air the ball out that time back to the ground, taking valuable time off the clock. So looks like we won't see Cade Fortin, the transfer from North Carolina. It was actually one of the first recruits for Jeff Scott to USM. They didn't recruit him at Clemson because he was in the same class of a man by the name of Trevor Lawrence. And here is the freshman getting some snaps in his college debut. Marsh with his second pass completed, but for a loss of about three and a half. And it's coming in to break things up, Chris Beverly. And man, big kudos to guys like Chris Beverly, Willie Eubanks, Marquise Blunt. Obviously, we see that this game is already well within the hand of the South Florida Bulls, but these guys, these Bulldogs on defense, they are still playing hard. They're still playing physical. They're still playing fast, and they have that never fight. I'm sorry, they have that never die, always fight mentality. By completing that pass, they keep the clock moving. Mentioned the 30-year-old Australian back to punt. And Schneider just gets this one away. From the 15, that one fumbled and back over the Bulls. They'll have it inside the red zone. Another special teams miscue. And a couple times falling into loving arms of some men in green and gold. This time around, it's Brock Nichols. And yet another special teams miscue has played the Bulldogs. That is something that has happened too many times too often today. And you cannot play like that against an FBS opponent and expect to be successful. Something that I expect Brent Thompson is going to want to go ahead and shore up for these next three games that they have remaining throughout the season to get his team to make sure that they play efficient. And that, when I say that, you can't have penalties, you can't have turnovers. Especially in the punt game, whether it's returning the kick, and especially with your punter punting the ball in his own end zone uh, allowing South Florida um, Amarion Dallison to get the touchdown and put the game up right going into the half uh, as much as they did. So both turnovers benefiting USF tonight. Uh, coming in to break up the play. Again, we talked so much about your defensive player of the year and Willie Eubanks, but Marquise Blunt is perhaps his Scotty Pippen. Yes, whenever we had our production meeting, Coach Brent Thompson spoke very highly of a Marquise Blunt, and we can see why he has made so many plays tonight. So unfortunate because you can see that the Citadel, they have talent on the defense side of the ball, just was not enough for this South Florida Bulls offense. Guess who? Again, blowing up the play was Blunt. And his teammates help him put an end to that. It's third down. And once again, like I said, kudos to this team because they are so greatly coached by Brent Thompson and Alou Conte and obviously Tony Gratham. Just not enough for the South Florida offense, not enough for the South Florida defense. They got more depth. They're playing down here in Florida where clearly we see it's humid and they're not quite used to that level of climate being up there from Charleston, South Carolina. But nonetheless, one thing that a coach cannot control and one thing that you cannot coach is effort. And that is something that Citadel is doing so much even right now. Freshman quarterback Marsh hands it off to Batie. Batie breaking tackles, not going down. And almost a first down when it's all said and done on what was third and 26, about a yard and a half shot. And so much for so long in this game, Citadel has been trying to plug up leaks in their boat. And every now and again, once you start plugging up too many leaks, it just finally overflows. And that's what it like, looks like it's going on right now. It'll be fourth and one, a chance for the Bulls to put it away here. Both these teams with top 10 opponents waiting for them next week on the road. Bulls going to South Bend. Bulldogs going to Jeff Scott's former employer at Clemson. Next week should be some interesting football. I am happy that we are part of college football being back. Here we are mid-September. I, I must admit I was not completely confident that this day would come, but Lincoln, I am happy to be sitting here with you calling this game 
first week of the college football 2020 season. Certainly appreciate all the crew that surrounds us and everybody who has helped make us feel both safe and comfortable. Also appreciate the time spent with the coaches chatting with Jeff Scott as well as Brent Thompson leading up to this season opener. A chance to introduce you to some of the newest players of these programs including the freshman quarterback Marsh who's looking to close things out here. It's, it is fourth and two for the Bulls. Marsh looking for the end zone. Pass is broken up by Destin Mack, but a flag comes out. So again, the Bulls working in some of their depth. Personal foul, chop block, offense number 62 is on, but penalty is declined. First down, Citadel. Oh wow! And on fourth down again, they are looking for it all into the end zone. And with that penalty being against the Bulls, the Citadel is not going to give them another bite at the apple. So the Bulldogs are going to get this football down three touchdowns with half a minute to play. And you know what, Lincoln? Speaking as a former corner, I'm so happy that that was not a pass interference on Destin Mack. I thought that was pretty good coverage. And plays like that, calls like that, penalties like that can deflate you as a corner, actually getting you out there and losing your confidence. So I'm happy to see that that was not called against Destin Mack because it looked like it was a pretty good, pretty good coverage to me. And then Rainey and the Bulldogs have just about completed a quarter of their schedule. Rainey over the top looking for one more strike in Tampa. Meanwhile, the Bulls of USF are 29 seconds away from matching a quarter of their win total from last year. And Makai LaPointe making sure to not fall asleep being back there in that safety position. Brandon Rainey tried to go ahead and see if he could off a ball right over his head. And you know what? Doing a great job staying upfield shoulder, disallowing that completion. Randy just three of 16 passing. All those completions coming in the first half. Bulls secondary has not given him a lot to work with. There is a positive note. He'll stop the clock, first down, and then some. Another successful strike to Keith White. As White now his second catch in this opener. And now if you're South Florida, you just simply put your safeties back about 15, 20, 30 yards deep because you know that Citadel has to go to the air if they want to actually go ahead and put some points on the board. So now this is just a matter of being smart, not giving them anything cheap, and playing fundamentally sound football on defense. Rainey again has the time, has the arm, and it's picked off by the Bulls, their third turnover of this opener. And what a way to put the punctuation on the first win for Jeff Scott here in 2020. Makai LaPointe doing exactly what I just outlined, staying deep as the safety. Do not let anybody deeper than you and just wait for the ball to be in the air. You know the quarterback has to go to it and making a play on the ball. And he did just that, high pointing it and then going and giving a nice return and then getting down. And we know we now see South Florida has the win fully secure in their grasp. So LaPointe gets it back, 13 seconds left on the clock. Before the Bulls are officially 1-0, and oh, McLeod will come back out, presumably in victory formation here, to take the knee. He won the quarterback battle this offseason, and tonight he's won the season opener. As the Bulls pick up their first victory under head coach Jeff Scott, they are 1-0. and oh. Next up, a tangle with the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame on the road in South Bend. But really, congratulations to both these football programs, all the discipline throughout the preseason, making adjustments, able to compete for four quarters, their college football season's underway. Yes, uh, so much went into just the just the production of being able to have a college football season. So kudos to both of these teams for being able to social distance, take the right precautionary measures.
to actually go ahead and allow this game to happen. Obviously, we see Citadel didn't win the game, but guess what? You know what? They have next, next week, they got the Clemson Tigers, but you know what? It's still football, still the opportunity to play this game that we all know and love. Offense, defense, special teams all showing up here today. Plenty of memories made in this season opener. Big thanks to our entire crew for Stanford Out. I'm Lincoln Rose. So long from Tampa, where Jeff Scott officially undefeated 1-0 as head coach of South Florida.